Okay, it's Steve Burns of our recording number five. Um, so we've been playing around with with hard, you know, hard modeling, hard surface modeling. Um, now we're going to kind of ex, ex, experiment and explore with um, with um, a, a more organic modeling. And how we're going to approach that is in Maya gives you the ability to use a paintbrush to actually sculpt your models. Okay, um, we're going to I'm going to show you some sculpting in in um, in Maya today, all this the first starting of the class here, and then I'm going to segue into sculpting in ZBrush. So we're going to get to kind of get to see you know two worlds of how sculpting is done, and they're both and they're both very very similar. So let I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to start with a simple plane. So I'm going to go with my Shift right click, and I'm going to put right down here plane, and I'm going to make this plane larger. Hit the R key. And just make it about the size of the of the ground plane um, I'm sitting here. So how about everybody get to that point? Next, okay. So what we're going to be doing is pushing and pulling vertices. So as you can see, the the polygon shapes here. If I kind of go ahead and right click on here and go to face view, all those edges of these polygons are obviously joined together by vertices. That's what we're going to be pushing and pulling. When we're doing painting. So to make sure we get a smooth result, we need more vertices, right? So we're going to subdivide this, okay? Go to my attributes. Um, so what I want you to do, let's go ahead and click on this one here, and I want to come up here and go to my um, standard. There we go. Cool. All right. Go to poly shape here. All right, now. Let's go back to this view, and what I want you to do is subdivide it. Take it up to about 50, to like this, okay? All right, once we subdivide this, now we have some points to, 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 to push around, okay? Now, what are we going to utilize to push these points around? I want to use a tool that's going to allow me to sculpt. And if you come right up here... Uh, we've been working quite a bit in the, in the poly modeling for hard surface modeling, and we've also explored, explored the curves and surfaces utilizing um, curve extrusion and or making using curves to make like wine glasses or soup bowls and, and stuff of that nature um, through the revolve command. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the third tab over here called sculpting. And the first tool I'm going to introduce to you is the sculpting tool. So while I'm in the sculpting command, I guess I should be able to put, um, I'm going to do it this way instead. Um, target the tool, right? And you're going to, now, what I'm, now to, to bring up the preferences for this, you're going to double click on the tool. So if I double click it, this is what I see, okay? All right, here's my size of the brush. Now, right now, it's really teeny. It's a circle, but it's really teeny there. If I go to my size and make it bigger, hopefully, see, it's got a little bigger. If I pull it over to the right, it's getting a little bigger. Now, if I start to paint, see what it's doing? Starting to paint on here, so I, I want to make the I want to get make it a little larger. There we go, and see I'm, I'm I just I'm just gonna paint, and the more you 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 paint, and using your your Wacom pen, I can press light to have a little bit of an effect. I can press harder to have a greater effect, right? If I want to put out what this tool is doing is actually pushing the points outward. And we're creating a terrain of some sort, right? We're pushing the points outwards. Now, what if I want to push the points back in? Well, the shortcut command in Maya to take to deselect is Control. So hold down the Control key, and it will push it in. Out with no control. In with control. So if I want to say, I want to make it like a little, little, little mountain skit, and I say... Say, for example, 
um, it's moving too slow for me. Right down here, right below the side slider is the strength. So I can bring the strength a little higher, and if I press down harder, boom, look at that, just crazy. All right? So Command Z, and I say I want to bring it down somewhere in between. There we go. It's a little faster. Okay. Make this. It's a little peaky. All right. Play with this. Get to this point and play. Okay. So let's let's explore another tool. Let's see. Now we've got the scope tool. I have my strength a little bit harsh. Okay. Bring it down a little bit. Um, if we go to the one right next to it, this is your smoothing tool. So if I click it, and I'm always moving around. Remember, you're working in 3D space. Some people were sitting still. You, you're in a 3D program. Your job is to get and move around this thing. Con use your navigation tools. And if I start to smooth it out, now I can smooth things out. Maybe it's too peaky. All right? Too many harsh peaks there. So I want to smooth it out, smooth it out, smooth it out. All right? So now smoothing out is making it go down, right? What's going to happen if I hold the control key? Let's see. Control. Control. Actually, it's kind of making it work even better. It's putting it right back down to its surface. Control is not doing anything, actually, on this one. But control will, will on other tools. See, it's smoothing it out, smoothing it out. Okay? Try that one. Play with that one for a little bit. All right. So the next one, the third one from the left, and if you mouse over it, I'm trying to get the... Uh, Automatic, uh, come on. All right, this is stupid. All right, so this is your smooth surface without changing the original shape. Okay, it's got the smoothing and smoothing without changing the original shape. So I'll tell you what, let me change the shape a little bit. Let's go add a little more. Kind of, kind of whack it out here a little bit. Pull it up, pull it up, pull up some more polys. All right, go to the smoothing command here, and it's going to favor the shape, but it's going to smooth these edges down. So it's very similar um, to the one, but it's going to, but it's going to favor the actual shape. Okay, um, I'm going to put some, some, some gutters in here real quick to make a point for the next tool. Um, let's go over here and double click it. Let me bring my size of my brush down a little bit and hold the control key down. And I'm going to make some gutters in here, so to speak, a little bit more. Okay. All right. Now, let me go to this one real quick first. This one here is basically, um, is you're pulling a single vertice along, along your surface. So if I grab this one, it's just pulling it up or down, up or down, okay? So if you want to make horns on something or little, you know, like little peaky landscape areas where it's a foreign alien landscape with these little interesting points coming out like this, all right, you have that ability to do so. If we go, now I want to, I want to show you the next one. I'm going to have you play with both of these just a little bit. This one is let me kind of mouse over this here a little bit okay that's your pinch all right so what that's going to do it's going to take let's see if we can take an edge here trying to find a take the strength up higher see what i can do there we go Let's go back to the tool. I accidentally got rid of it. There we go. See that? It's, it's pinching. Now, these are very, very low poly at this point. 
It's going to pinch it together. Trying to do the best. There we go. It's pretty low poly up there, so it's not going to be an ideal tool for this uh, for right now. Yeah, I don't. I, one person says put it on the spikes, but yeah, it, it's. I need to have more more polygons in here. We'll come back to that, and I'll show you a better example. Okay. Okay. Um, there is one. This one here is going to actually flatten your surface, so level your surface. So if I come over here, make the brush a little bit bigger, and start to sculpt on this, it's going to start flattening out. It's like taking a palette knife on the clay and flattening out the tops of the surface there. Um, let me go ahead and give it a little harsher strength. Okay, it's kind of flattening out the surface. Go to this one here. You can see it it's flattening out those surfaces very quickly. All right. Play with those real quick. All right. Um, I'm going to come back to some of these over here, but there's one in here I thought was kind of fascinating. Say, for example, you've got valleys in here. Like you can see, I have here on the, on the, on the, the base of these uh, mountain-type uh, peaks. These little valleys right down over in here. Let me go in and get in a little closer. It'll be easier for you to see. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move over to this one here just very quick. Fill in valleys on a surface. Okay. Not everybody's watching me. So this one here, fill in valleys. That's kind of a fun one. Now, I wanted to go in order here, but since we're making peaks and valleys, I figured this might be kind of a fun one to kind of cover first. So if I target this one, as you can see, the tool settings change for that tool now. And if I start to paint in here, I'm going to bring my strength up. It's really low. It should target these valleys first. Right? It'll target the valleys before it targets the peaks. Oops. Um, let's see what happened here. Make sure I'm in the same time. Get out of the tool. There we go. It's filling in those valleys. It's bringing up the valleys first. All right? If I bring it around... And again, I must have accidentally clicked on something else, but there we go. Now, we, now we're in that tool, and we're filling in the valleys. So if you just want to affect that, be aware that you, you have uh, this tool here. I'll show you one more. Look, I to turn that caps lock off. I'm going to show you one more. Let's go back over here a little bit. So this one's filling in the valleys. This one right here is your stamp tool. This one's kind of cool. Watch me. Now, here, grab the stamp tool. If I click and hold and drag, I get a stamp. Right? If I move right to left, it resizes. If I move up and down, or I can rotate it a little bit, place it on there, where the white values are going to be your peaks, your darker transparent values are, are, are not going to move much at all. And if I release the, the cursor, watch what happens. Boom. It added texture to it. So wherever I, if I release it, boom. It added texture to it. Now, what we've been doing so far is moving around the polys based on, um, on hard surface modeling. We've been doing hard surface modeling right now. If I want to do so, what I want to do is if I want a smooth, um, a little better result. I want to turn it to a subdivision surface. Anybody remember the shortcut key for that? Number three. Hit the number three. Watch what happens. Boom. 
smooths it all out. Now, if I go to my scope tool, watch what happens. Smooth scoped. All right? It's subdivision surfaces. It's, 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 it's using algorithms to interpret, you know, uh, circular shapes from the polys that you have there. If you want more detail, you simply subdivide this more. Okay? Um, in the tool setting box here, you can play with the spacing of your brush. For example, I'll tell you what. Let me actually um, start fresh again. So I'm going to right click. Let's exit sculpting. Now my object is selected. Delete it. Go add another little um, plane in there. A little large again. Let's subdivide this more this time. <laughs> Let's make it 100 and 100. Okay. See a lot more. Now, if I go to my scope tool here, and you see your spacing here, if I'm going to bring this further apart, and I start, and I say I should be able to scope that there. Oops, caps lock is on. Turn that off. Let's bring this down a little smaller. My strength is really high. Oh, okay. That one's not. Uh, let's find out what's going on here. All right, here we go. So if I start to scoped. It's just like the, the brush tool in Photoshop, where you can tell it to tell each brush to have a greater spacing or a smoother result. Now, um, here's my spacing is turned on. I'm, I'm going to undo that, make it greater amount of spacing. See? See what it's doing? All right. <coughs> if you want to even spread it, spread it apart even more, boom, 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 boom right? If I want it smooth, I can bring the, the, the brush the brush strokes closer together to one another and just a smooth result. I can play with the buildup, right? If I make it really strong, it builds up really fast. If I bring it down because I want a lot more subtle control, I can see it's really low. You can barely see it. So if I bring it up a little more, there we go. Maybe somewhere in between. See? So you've got all these, these real nice uh, um, uh, controls in here. Okay? We can turn symmetry on or off. I want to paint on one side to equal the other. So if I turn it on, let's see what happens. I can go to X, Y, or Z axis. Let's go to X. See? You can see both sides. It's going to rotate this around. See it both sides at the same time. All right. And we can go in an X, Y, or Z direction. I'm going to uh, just turn it off for now so I have a little more control. And of course, I can always go back to my smoothing and kind of smooth this down. Now, you've got to rotate your object so it knows how to smooth your object. Okay. Build up, All right? Smoothing it down. So play with that. Play with those. Let's do a little bit of a, a little more of a practical application um, of, of sculpting, which would have been real handy on, on the soft body dynamics that you guys are doing. So let's uh, go ahead. I'm going to shift, right click. I'm going to go ahead and give us a cylinder. Let's go ahead and make this cylinder larger, about something like this. And I'm going to squish it down, so I'm going to make this kind of a, a, a tabletop. Hit W, bring it up to here. Um, I will um, come on, we'll just make it a little thinner. That's good. All right, so I'm going to come over here and select the, um, the top. Okay, the top <laughs> surface is here. So select it, grab that. And oops, 
I want to go to my surface mode, faces. Okay. Grab this here, which means it's probably also selected, selected the ones on the bottom. And I don't want to select those. I'm going to use my control key and just grab all these on the side and the bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. Control B for bevel. Okay. Um, come over to my panels here, my options panels, and I'm going to play around with the segments, probably round it off like so. Let me get a little tabletop there. That looks good. All right. I will um, select the surfaces on the bottom. I'm going to have to deselect the surfaces on the top. That's control, drag. So only the bottom, I've got, I missed a couple there, so I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift key and multiple select those. All right, hit the A key, fit that into view, or the F key that fits selected into view. Um, I'm going to go to the bottom and go to my resize tool. I want to resize this. This is going to, I want to make the stem for the table here. So hold the shift key down to extrude these in, like right about that. I will say we'll get right about there, okay? And then I'm going to hit the W key to extrude this out, holding the Shift key, extrude that out just a little bit. Then I'm going to hit the R key just so that I can just pull those in like so. So that's going to be, I'm going to start my stand in here. All right, now hit my um, W key. Shift key once again, extrude it. That's going to be the post for the table. Oops. Hit the A key. Now, check this out. I have the bot, the polys chosen at the bottom, right? What if I want to make this, this, um, uh, the post for the table a little bit thinner? That means I'm going to have to grab this next surface, or uh, next faces right along the side, in addition to this beveled ring. So what you do is you can you can um, add to selected selected neighboring selected polygons. To do so, hold the shift key down and hit the greater than symbol on your keyboard. So shift greater than key um, um, symbol, and it see it selected the next loop up and then the next loop on in. If I hit it again, if I hit the less than, it'll shift back. So shift greater than will we'll select, we'll select the next neighboring selected loop. And then the next neighboring selected loop is going to be this up here. If I do it again, what is it going to select? The bottom, the, the underside of the table. Shift greater than. Shift less than key, which is on the right-hand side of the M key on your keyboard. Shift less than will bring it back. All right? So I want to shift greater than. Let's go ahead and hit this here. There. So I've got those targeted. So I want to just kind of resize this a little bit. I'll go ahead and go up to the all up view, maybe a little easier. And let's see, maybe we'll do a do an x-ray view here, which is probably gonna have to pull this on over right there. There we go. Now I can see through it. Hit the R key and just grab the the um the planer, so it'll it'll resize it along that plane. So I just made it thinner. See that there? Okay. All right. So I'll go back. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and pull it back on over. All right now, I'm gonna hit the shift less than to go back to my bottom selected to make the the, the bottom of the table. So this is gonna be this is gonna connect to the ground the, the stabilize the table here the base of the table. Um, so what I'll do is hold the shift key down. Let me go back to this view here. Let me go. So I'm going to pull it on down. I'm going to do it this way. I will um, W, shift, pull it out a little bit. Hit the R key. And hit the F key to fit that into view. Select it into view. And just pull this on out like so. Okay. And hitting the F key. There we go. Now, again, I can use 
x-ray view to help me see what I'm doing here. Hold the shift key down, pull it on out. That's going to be the best base of the table. <coughs> Hit the A key to see the whole thing. That looks good. W key, shift, resize down. <coughs> All right, there we go. So that's going to be my table, okay? Very simple, you know, pretty easy little table there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the x-ray view so that I can see what we have. Okay. All right. Now, next, what I'm going to do is go ahead and make my tablecloth. So, shift, right click. Oops. Let's not do that. Hit the Q key for the. There we go. Go ahead and add a plane to this one. Um, I'm going to hit the R key for the plane. Make it big as that there. Like so. W, bring it on top that oops all right a there we go f okay i'm gonna add more uh um separation in here okay so i'm thinking of going into my attributes editor come over here to the um actually I'm probably go to the poly plane let's add a few more We'll go to 50. That'll be good. Okay. That'll give it a nice little result. What do we do next? That's where we go to cloth. How do I go there? Switch to effects. Switch to effects. Where do we go next? In cloth. That's correct. And then make this what? Create the cloth. Okay, and then what do we do next? All right, we're going to select the table. That will be that one there. I'm going to rename that one and call it table. And I will rename this one and call it cloth so I can stay organized. Now, clothy. <laughs> Take that out of there. Okay, cool. Now I can stay organized. Now target the table, in cloth, create passive collider. All right. I'm gonna. I, I always like to work with showing my um, my polys, so I'll hit this little visual cue there, so I can see what's going on here. All right. So I should be able to go ahead and apply this, and it loads right on down. I wanted to come down some more, so I think I stopped this at 120. Let's go to 200. There. Okay. Um, and let's go back to the beginning. And drip it down. There we go. And like something like this. Okay. All right. I can even go more. I can go. I can go more than two hundred. Say I want to go three hundred. And yeah, three hundred, three hundred. Good. So if I come back, it gives us some time. Comes down even more. Okay. Oh, you get the point. So from here. What you could do is what? Make it subdivision surfaces, right? Hit the number three key. But making sure, let me go back to number one. I want to make sure that my cloth is selected. Number three key, there it is. Okay. Go to our sculpting tools. All right. If I double click it. By default, it's jumping back down to the smaller one. There we go. See? And you can start messing with this, right? So I can pull these out a little more. Pull that out a little more. If I want some valleys in there, make it look more wrinkly, hold down the Control key. And I'm going to make the strength a little higher so I can work a little faster. See, I'm holding the control key down. Right, it pushed it too much, too fast. So you just kind of play with that a little bit, okay? Um, and play with the build up too. Maybe we'll bring the build up down a little, little less. All right, control. There we go. That's a little better. No control. 
pulls this on out. Now, my spacing, pull it in a little tighter. So I don't have that um, the stipple going on in here. So a smoother, smooth result. All right. Uh, I will push this down. Control. Start messing with this. Does that make sense? Kind of more of a practical uh, use of this. So as you start to bring that on up, pull this around. Control, push that on in there, and I can start making indentations by the table. Pull those on in there. All right, pull these on out a little bit. Now, if it's too peaky, what do we do? Smoothing. Hit the smoothing button, right? Smooth it out a little bit. See? Smooth it out. Yeah. Um, for this what are some uh, practical applications? Clothing. Clothing. It'd be the same way. This would be great for clothing. You want uh, you want this to you know Batman's cape or something, Superman's cape. Um, that's that's a practical, and I'm showing you something slightly. It's, it's a simple practical application that that you guys could use to your project for your project. Um, the next one we're going to have you guys use some use the modeling brush to start perfecting. Uh, some of your soft body dynamics, your pillows, your curtains, your cape, your clothing. Make a tank top for a character. Remember, we're able to actually um, tell certain points on, the, on on an object to tell it to be adhered there. So when the, when soft body is being denied, being uh, applied, it bounces against the body or, or, or the, another subject, but the points stay anchored. Right? That could be the tank top of a character. Okay. All right. Okay. And the body, and the body of the character could be the Passive collider, okay. right? But what this does is it allows you now the pro. Remember when you're using soft body dynamics, you're using um, you're allowing the program to, to calculate those physics for you. Now this is a way for you to control how you really want it to look dynamically. So say the cape looks great, but yet you want to pull it out a little bit more. All right. Um, you know, make it you know lift up or pull out the ends a little more. Now you have these sculpting tools to allow you to do so. Does it automatically key these postures to the timeline for the animation? It can. We're not getting. We're not going to talk about that yet. Okay. But yes. So the answer is, can you animate this? Yes. The answer is yes. We're not there yet. We will. <laughs> we, we 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 will get there. Accentuate surface detail, right? No. Um, there's one on here I really liked. It's um, um, this is this is called softly lift sur lift the surface or yes, yeah, softly lift surface. This one right next to it um, is randomly spray a stamp imprints on the surface. You know, um, if I grab this one here. See, I can softly, you know, you see how it maintains that soft nature of it to kind of lift it up. Let me go ahead and make the brush a little bigger. Okay. Make it even bigger. All right. So it's that stamping, right? The build up. Let's build up. Let me bring the stamping a little closer. Let's see what we have. You can utilize that if that's going to, if that will help. So again, I'm just I'm just exploring, experimenting, see what I can do. Okay. Now when we get into ZBrush. I'll show you how to lift things up, and ZBrush is great for making clothing. Um, all right. So explore that. You know, build a table or something, create a cloth. Explore applying some of your your sculpting tools to that cloth to kind of control a little bit. And here's some nice little workflow techniques here. So, um, so I've, I've selected a loop. So there are joining polygons. Once that loop is selected, that's all I've got selected there. I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard. The right arrow moves it up. The, the left arrow moves it down. I can I can I can select the next loop up or the next loop down. 
Um, if I want to move just that loop, physically move it, hold the Alt key, bring it up using the arrow keys, or bring it down using the arrow keys. I'm just kind of nudging it. If I move it to the left, if I use the arrow keys and move it to the right, I can do that. You know, just if you want, want some minute adjustments of some sort. If I want to expand that, um, I can use what my shift bracket to the open bracket or greater than bracket. That'll select more. Um, and then, of course, I can use my left or right arrow to go back to the single one to select it up or down. And if I want to say I want this top three, I can I can select this one here. And then, of course, do my shift open bracket. So it's a nice little just navigational things I thought would be really handy if you want to do some minute changes or some quick selections of, of, of adjoining polys. Resuming. Okay. First of all, I love ZBrush. Um, it's a magical program. And um, and I'm going to find, I, I was building a stegosaurus and I, I've got to go find it. So, but for now, it's kind of, let's keep this thing simple. Got your general interface here. Um, over here are my tools that will be listed or access to tools that's listed on the left hand side. And of course, some of your, your preferences and, and, and options for your tools will be listed here on the right hand side. So these tools, all these can be dragged off. We got preferences, all these can be dragged off. You see that little symbol right there? That means you can drag it off and you can place it over here into the docking panel, the docking side. Now, ZBrush is his own little program, his own little world here. So once you're going to get used to it, um, you're going to absolutely love it. Uh, and it's much better than what it used to be. I mean, before it was just absolutely crazy difficult and you couldn't wrap your head around anything he was trying to do. But it's got, he's laughing because he knows. <laughs> my first Berlin yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 2010. Oh yeah. That was, that was pretty tough. Um, all right, so let's um, let's play around with this. So um, we've we're, we're going to go into these menus. We're going to talk about them. A lot of this is going to take some memorizations. If you want to create a new document, it's under the document tab. I can open the document. I can save a document, right? I can go to Lightbox and get a doc document. I'll show you what Lightbox is in just a moment. I can import a model or export a model. It's like if we're going to do um, um, 3D printing. All, all 3D models have to be an STL file in order for the 3D printer to understand it. That stands for for um, standard tessellation language. But all that is is tripling your polys, basically. Um, if um, um, we've got you know new document, I want to make a brand new document. Say I want to make a brand new document. I'll go, I'll just click that and it creates that new document now. Nothing's in it, right? Um, 3D objects in ZBrush are called tools. They're not called objects or 3D objects or it's like they're called tools. So if you make a hand in ZBrush and save it out, that's a hand tool. You save a head in ZBrush, create a head in ZBrush, that's, your, that's a tool. They're all called tools. All right. So what ZBrush is, is 3D for sculptors, all the language and the tools are based off of sculpting. Okay, sculpting language or sculpting terminology. So if you ever played with clay and sculpting, that's what this program is based in. It's a organic modeling program. It's strongest when you're making human characters and monsters and textured animals and stuff like that. And the ZBrush highly relies on your stylus. It is not a mouse program. It requires you have a, a you can do it with the mouse, but all, all the ZBrush is designed to utilize that pressure sensitivity of the stylus to give you the effects that you want. And it's really damn good program. Now, yes, Maya has sculpting, right? But when you start to add too many polys to Maya, too many points, it starts to slow down. 
ZBrush won't. You can have millions and it won't slow down. It's an amazing program. So, okay, we're going to keep it simple. And what you have to go get all of the tools is called Lightbox. When you first open up ZBrush, it, it, it automatically um, will open up. Um, and the way you get Lightbox is hitting your a, your comma key on your keyboard. That will bring it up or take it away. Or right there in front of you, this this little button there that says Lightbox. If you click it, click it again, click it, it's your toggle for making Lightbox go in and no, come in and go away. Um, let's see. I'm going to thinking, let's do, if we click and hold, we can drag it on over. Okay. And this is what I would like everybody to do. Um, with ZBrush open, if Lightbox is not open, click the tab here or click the comma key in your keyboard to open up Lightbox. And if you click and hold on, on, on any of these tools and drag it to the right, you've got more, more options in there. It's just, just a little slide, like a drawer. That's all that is. And what I'd like you to do is, uh, why don't you select this one? I think I'm going to select the Dino Wax here. If I double click on it, um, you change. Okay, project has changed it. Yes, go ahead and change it. Oh, actually, I guess it wants me to save it. Okay, and then you're going to get this. Okay, got a ball. You can sculpt on this ball. Immediately, you see your stylus right there, the size of your stylus. In Photoshop, what's, does anybody remember the shortcut for making your, your brush bigger and smaller? Brackets. Bracket to the right. Look at the right-hand side of the P key on your keyboard. Bracket to the right makes it bigger. Bracket to the left makes it smaller. Okay. Now, by default, you have the standard brush. Now, what was the um, um, what was that brush called? The first brush in 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 in, in um, Maya called for sculpting. The sculpting brush is what it's called. I just told you. That's what this is. This is your sculpting brush. So if I start to paint, now right now you see it's, it's working symmetrically. All right, and if I start to play with this, get this nice smooth result. Okay. If I press harder, it comes out more. Softer, it comes out less. If you don't want symmetry turned on, you simply hit the X key on the keyboard. It turns it off. And now you can paint asymmetrically, okay, wherever you want. If you hit the X key again, symmetry comes back on, okay? Now, when you navigate in ZBrush, you can click and hold outside your object, and that will rotate your object around, all right? Click and hold outside your object anywhere on the plane. Well, not well. Not, I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. Or you can hold it, or with the stylus. Hold down your Alt key. Actually, you don't have to hold, with the stylus. You don't have to hold down your Alt key. Just hold down your right click button. Let your pen hover above your screen. And hold it down. Try it right now. So what I like you to do is go to your light light box, go get the um the I think what was it the Dino Wax? Dino Wax. 64. Dino Wax 64. Double click it, open it up. Okay. Remember you can use your comma key to open up the tray or, or, or not open up the tray. Okay. Um let me pause recording. So let's explore some of the brushes that we have in ZBrush. Um, but before I do so, um, here, this ball of wax, so to speak, is basically representing wax, is a tool. If I want to save this model, you go, you go to save as here. 
Save as. It's it's ZTL ZBrush Tool. Guys, watch me over here. Yeah, watch me. Okay, all right. Now, ZBrush Tool. I'm gonna go over. I'm going to my desktop. I think I've got a folder called Zero ZBrush. Maybe Lightwave Maya. All right, I'll make a new folder called Zero ZBrush. I've got it on my on my external drive. So Zero. ZBrush, and I'll make up a, a subfolder, and um, oh, that's interesting. There we go. Brush tutorial. All right, we'll just call it Wax Dynamesh. What is want to call this one, and 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 just leave it there. All right, now, um, if we want to load our objects back in, load tool. There's my wax dynamesh I put in the brush folder, um, and I can open. That'll bring it back on in, okay? All right, uh, if I'm going to export this out, it's going to allow me to export this out to several different formats. OBJ is your standard format that it, it, basically it's the JPEG of, of, uh, of 3D World. Any 3D program is going to be able to recognize this. Um, then we have other uh, Maya, um, Cinema 4D. We got MetaCaps, you know, Web 3D. Some formats it'll export. So just be aware that you that you can save it to any of those formats there. Um, all right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna cover some of these things, but I'm gonna just want to kind of want to cover just a few of these. These tools I think you're going to use on a regular basis. Now, I'm going to hit the X key, turn this off. Now, to resize my brush, I gave you the shortcut for making the bracket, make it bracket to the right and bracket to the left. If you hit this, hold down the space bar key, you get a little sub menu panel for, for adjusting your brush size, making it bigger and making it smaller. Okay? Now, what I like to do is to set up um, set up this functionality for the top button on my Wacom pen. Not everybody's watching me. So if I go back to my Wacom properties, I'll go to my Wacom properties is what I should say. Here we go. Grab, whoop, ZBrush is not there. Add it on in there. ZBrush is open. It'll see it. ZBrush. Select it. Top button is a right click on this one. I like my right click down here, so that's my right click. I'm going to make that top button. Let's see. Let's do a... Let's see what's in here. Okay. Keyboard. Keystroke. Spacebar. Not watching me. All right, and this is going to be call this one sub menu. Click OK. All right, done. So if I top click, there it is. And I can resize my brush real quick that way. So that's kind of a yeah. No, now this one I don't. Some programs require you to do that, but this one I don't. I just click and release just the top, and it'll it'll stay there. And all right, so my sizing is here. Focal shift, click and release again, is the feather. You know how you have the feathered edge of a brush? That's determining how feather is going to be, very feather or hard edge. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm resize. I'm just dragging the brush slider back and forth. Let's go to let's go to the hard edge here, okay? And I'm gonna bring I'm gonna go click it again, bring the size down and paint. You can see just how hard edge it's going to be. If I click it again, go to a nice, go back and grab that like a little bigger. See what it does? Okay, so that's your standard brush. 
Um, another one you're going to be using on a regular basis, I'm going to click and release, is going to be, I like to use, let's see, right there, the move topological. Once I target the brush, it's going to, it's going to show up up here in your last used brushes, your quick picks. Okay. So if I move topological, if I click on this again, you'll see it's going to be, it should be, it's going to be right there. It's grayed out because you already have it selected. And what that does is it pulls, right? It pulls, it allows you to kind of shape it. Like if you're going to grab the cheeks and you want to give a character bigger cheeks or something or pull out the jaw a little bit, or maybe I want to create a face. Let me go ahead and hit the uh, undo. Go back. All right. And I want to make a basic shape of the head. I'm going to bring it on back so I can take a look at this. So a head is not round, right? It's egg shape. So I can click this, make a bigger brush like so. Maybe what I'll do is I also will play with the focal shift so it's not going to make it a little more of a hard edge. Hit the F key using control, right click. All right, pull it out. I'm going to go right over here, grab this and pull the head up a little bit, pull the chin down like so. Right, so that's going to be your um, your brush to quickly mold things here. Um, take the top of the head, maybe pull that out a little bit. <coughs> okay, so you kind of see what, what it does. Um, Move topological. Um, another one you're going to be using quite a bit is your clay builder. One of my favorites. Um, clay buildup allows you. Remember, remember, ZBrush is sculpting. It's 3D for sculptors, and you're adding clay, creating clay shapes, right? So I'll tell you what, let me go to my X key and see where they are. Okay, we're going to start, see what I can do here. Oh, there we go. All right, we're creating, creating like clay shapes. You now pulling out the nose. Kind of keeping it symmetrical. If I hold down the Alt key, that pushes it in. Okay, now you're looking at it wondering, well, where are the polys, right? Shift F will show you the polys. Okay, so that is, where are you? That one. It's listed over here, but Shift F, Shift F again just shows you clay mode, Shift F. So you get to see that this is not very much resolution going on here. So Alt key, right? Um, if I want to bring out the, the top of the head or so, I'm going to kind of pull this on over. Make this. I'm going to click this, make this a little larger, kind of get the forehead going here. Or hit the X key and play with it this way. Okay. Um, again, if I hold down the Alt key, I can push that in. See, and, what, what, and it's looking like clay, it's called clay buildup. Pushing it in, pushing it out. All right. Again, Shift F goes back to the to the clay mode now. Right now, we don't have a whole lot of polys in here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add more. So if I shift F key, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to um, subdivide this into smaller polys. So I'm going to get higher resolution. So command or control D there. Now if I hit shift D again, shift F again, and then shift F, 
to see more poly. So control D. Oh, oh, okay. Switch to the highest resolutions or delete. Okay, I did something wrong here. So let me just go back here. Okay. All right. Command D. That I'm added more resolution. So Shift F and then hit Shift F again. See the smaller ones. So it didn't update for some reason. The um, um, it didn't update right away. But if I start to paint with this, play with this here. This is important. See, it's see, I'm getting a little better resolution. If I want to add more more detail to this, once again, Control D again, Shift F, Shift F again. It's even smaller. Really starts to take on. Um, the realism of clay. All right. So if I bring it across, and I'm just kind of you know playing around with with seeing what this does. So now once once I start to build up the clay, remember I can make shapes. I can smooth this down. Once to what what to smooth it down. I am going to hold down the shift key and you see that your cursor turns blue and that smooths it out and it's fast. So if you're going to you're going to create create an animal or some type of a organic surface, you're going to create the texture and then you're going to smooth it out to control um, your, your shape on the end and then end, as an end result. Okay, so clay buildup. Again, I can always go back to move topological, right? If I want to start pulling things on out, I can use any of these sculpting tools at any time to help me help me achieve what I'm trying to achieve. So I want to get the forehead out a little bit more, pull it out. All right, so I'm just you know this is not meant to look like a person. I'm just playing with the tools. They do have three or four different move tool op options. I've, I've had the opportunity of playing with them. What is it that feeds your preference for move topo versus any of the others? Um, so the question is, why do, I, why do I use move topo as opposed to some of the others? I find that move topo gives me a little more control. Some of the others are a little bit more drastic, um, and you can play with them. Feel free to go in there and experiment with them. Um, we've got um, here's some here's your standard move tool. I think this came before move topo. Yeah, that's the one I'm familiar with. Right. One so I'm this one, see, if this one, this one is it's a little fat, a little stronger, and you might want to use this in some instances. Move topological favors the actual shape. And, and, and honors that shape a little better. But I think I, I found that I had a little bit more control over it than the others. Okay. Um, Shift F again goes to my standard, you know. You know, maybe what I want to do is um, create like a gill-like structure on, 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 on this shape there. I, mean, I like these, these gill-like looking shapes here. So there's another tool you use quite a bit, which is probably called Damien Standard. Now... If I don't remember, I remember the name of the tool, but I can't find it here. You hit the first letter of the tool. Now, Damien is the name of one of the product, one of the people who worked closely at Pixelogic in Los Angeles, and he created this tool. So if I hit the D key, boom! Any tool with the D key is gonna it's gonna pop up. Everything else is gonna be hidden. If I want the standard tool, hit the S. Let go back and go back again. Hit that again. Hit the S. And all the tools with the with the first letter S are going to be there, like slice, curve, slash, um, smooth, and so forth. Standard should be in there too. There it is. Standards right there. Um, I'm interested in the Damien's Damien's is it Damien standard. Okay, to go back to here. Um, damn standard there. I already have a selected. What that's going to do, 
is it's going to put slices. It's going to, it's going to let you slice into it. So I'm going to come in here and just slice. Now look at my resolution. Not as strong as it should be. I can do it again. Command or control D. Smooths it out. Command or control D again. Smooths it out. Now I can look at that. I can etch into it real smooth. And I've got a lot of polys in here. And it's working fast and smooth. Right? Again, you need... There we go. See, I'm etching, etching shapes in here. So, bring it on in. Say this is going to come out to here. Creating some type of an alien brow or something like this. Very organic. Yeah, like Star some, something, something from Star Trek. Right. <laughs> right. You're going to love these tools. All right. F key, bring it on back. Okay. All right. Now we've got some other ones. Um, and I'm just going to show you a few. Basically, clay buildup, uh, move topological, smooth. All now smooth. You're not going to really need. Don't need to need need to have here because what smooth is is simply hold the shift key down on your keyboard. All right. So if I right click. Bring the brush a little bigger, or how 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 the the size of your brush is going to affect how things are going to smooth. What if I want to smooth it out, but I don't want to smooth all these little edges? I can get in closer. See how the see how the brush actually articulates to the surface. That's beautiful. So if I want to click it, bring the brush size down. Let me uh, click it again, bring the size smaller, and then hold the shift key, and I can just smooth the areas where I want it. See how it how it just shapes? It alter it just articulates to the surface. That's what you want to see. That's why that 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 stylus is important. If I press light, I get a little bit of an effect. Now with no modifier, I'm back to damn standard. And then I can come in here and smooth it out with the shift key. All right, so play. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and experiment and play with these tools. So the Damien standard, holding your shift key, getting a smooth tool. No matter what brush you're in, hold your shift key. That will give you the smooth tool. This one. All eyes up here. Here's one everybody seems to really enjoy. It's called Snake Hook. Hit the S key. So like, now I don't remember where it is exactly in all those tools, so I just put the S key, look for it. And that one called Snake Hook right there. If I target this one, and I'm, what it does is it makes snakes coming out of there. You know? You make it like a little, little let's see, let's go hit the X key on this one. And that's kind of rotated around. We'll make the I'm gonna make the brush a little bigger this time. Pull it on out like this, right? So that one everybody seems to enjoy. Now um, it's, it's starting to lose a little detail in here, so shift kind of smooths it out a little bit. See, helps relax it. So what smoothing is doing is it's relaxing the polish just a little bit. Okay, bring it across. Okay, shift, relax the polys. Shift, relaxes the polys. It's kind of so you can see what it does. See what it's doing there? Now it's losing a lot of definition up here. So shift F key, you get to see what's happening. There's not enough information. All right, so let's try something else. Let me, let me go ahead and undo these real fast. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and do sim something similar. Pull this on out, okay? Now, 
I'm losing a little detail in here, which means I need to subdivide this some more. Control or Command D to subdivide. Shift F and Shift F again. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's adding more polygons in here. Control D again and again. All right. You know what? I want to show you this way. This is not the workflow I really want to. I want to share with you guys. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way back. Okay. Okay. Now let me um, just pull some shapes out of here. Hit the X key. Pull some simple shapes coming out like so. You can see we're starting to lose definition in here a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go over here and maybe pull a little chin out of here. Make the brush a little bit bigger. In fact, I'm gonna come back, go grab this here, and go get my move topological. We're gonna pull this down a little bit, kind of make the, the face or the chin rotate this around. Make the top of the head, make that a little bigger. Pull this on around. So you're going to be moving a lot. Okay. Maybe I want to pull this on now. Maybe I want I want the other horn to be pulled out uh, simultaneously. So hit the X key again. Let's see where. Oh, I think I lost it. There we go. And I can just pull this on out. So I'm still in. Move topological, right? I'm gonna to want to just pull this out just a little bit more. Okay. Let's pull the forehead out a little bit. Okay. Make the bring the uh, the brush downwards. Hold the Alt key, and I can push that in like so. Or what I can do is this. If I go back to Damien Standard, not Damien Standard, but um, the standard tool, the standard uh, brush here, okay, and I can push in a little bit, right? Kind of give myself an outline, pull the eyebrows out a little bit. Now I can go back and go to my move topological. And kind of pull out the for kind of the the forehead here. So I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Now what I should have is a reference of some sort. All right, but you know, without a reference, nose is gonna come out here. Now with the nose. I could pull this out, but I might just choose to go back to the standard tool, all right? And the nose is going to be it's going to pull out somewhere right along there. So I'm going to push this just gently forward, pull that out a little bit. Once I have that, maybe what I'll do is go to move topological and just pull that on out like so, all right? Okay. Um, if I go back to standard tool, just kind of playing around with switching the tool up a little bit. Now you look at my um, my focal shift is a little bit too strong, so I'm going to bring it more like this, and come back and bring the drawing size down a little bit. And if I hold the Alt key down, I can push those in a little bit. Okay or push this out okay there we go okay all right now i'm going to make a little bit of a drastic result here let's come over here and put uh like little fins on top of his head or something okay i'm gonna bring back some type of a or maybe better yet maybe we can pull this on out like that Okay, some type of an alien life form of some sort. 
the bones are coming in and connecting right into here. Pulling it on up. So using the standard tool. Kind of pushing it on out. They want to bring this up a little bit. So I'm going to scope it out as much as I can. I'm just kind of just, you know, you don't need to know how to do this. Just kind of watch and so I'm just scoping it out just a little bit here. This is too big here. Make the brush smaller so I can get inside a little more. Okay. Bring that. Now you can see what's happening with the polys up here. I'm starting to lose a little definition, right? Okay. What if I want to just pull that out a little bit? I can go back, move topological, make my brush a little bigger, and I can just pull that. I'm just pulling it, just learning to just shape the polys a little bit. All right, if I want it to be not make it look like it kind of it waves a little bit from side to side. Oops, what did I do here? I've got, um, I need, need to turn off symmetry. Hit the X key so I can kind of move it over here, move this one over like this, you know, kind of make it look like it's uh, maybe a fin of some sort. There's some flexibility to it. <laughs> Again, I'm just, I'm just uh, I don't have a reference. I'm just kind of playing around with this. And it's fast. Okay. All right. Hit the F key, fit it to the full view. Now, what's beautiful here is if I hit the D key or Shift D, watch this, everybody. It's important. Everybody watching? So Shift D brings it down to, to lesser polys. So I can keep working and say uh, there's too much definition. I want to simplify the shape, right? Bring, the, bring it on down in size, okay? And then play with this tool a little more. Kind of, you know, play with this, get a little more eyebrows. I can keep it in low poly mode. All right, and if I need to go back to more polys, hit the D key, and it can go back hit as many times as I can to go back up to high poly mode. So I can go to Shift D to low poly, and then D back to holly, um, um, full poly or, or or high res. So I can switch back and forth anytime I want to while I'm modeling. Does that make sense? So play around with that concept. So I'm just goofing around here. I'm just goofing around here, and I basically use move topological. Um, I'll use move topological if I want to kind of pull things out, for example. You know, if I want to kind of you know, push it. Now I've got I've got symmetry turned on, so I want to push in the get a little more character to the cheeks there. There we go. Hit the F key. Bring that in view. So I got to, and I'm I'm using the clay brush also, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. I can move this on in, kind of developing the jaw. Maybe I'll bring the bring in some of this. I want to push some of this up in here. I might resort to the more of the of the clay brush because I want to add more texture to here to get my imagination going here. So I'll go back to my clay buildup. Cause I clay buildup is like putting clay on 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 your on your sculpt and just sculpting it on there, adding more. And that's what that's what we're doing here. Um, so I've got some texture. This is kind of smooth here. I don't want the smoothness going on. So I'm going to bring that on down. I'm going to start to kind of play with this by adding some texture. See how I brought the texture up into this little thin area up in here. All right. So I want to start kind of like 
moving the brush around, sculpting in the direction of the flow. All right, I'm, I can add more, more, more clay in here. So I'm adding more clay. Bring it on up, bring it on up. So see what's happening here? So if I want to push in a little bit, hold my Alt key. I'm going to bring this brush down a little smaller. Hold the Alt key, and I can kind of push in a little bit, pushing into the clay, like taking my fingers and pushing into the clay. You want this texture because this texture is going to help, help you to decide how this is going to look afterwards. So you're going to smooth it out or add a little Damien standard to it. So I'm pushing in, holding the Alt key, pushing the clay in. Oops, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to push the clay out without uh, any modifier. Um, around the eyes here, I'm going to bring this a little smaller. You've got, oh, you know what? Let me show you. Well, I'll tell you what to do with this way for now. I'm, I'm, it's like this muscle around the eyes in here coming in and around, right? I'm going to kind of simulate that, that, that muscle going on. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with the nose. I, might, I may not want one of those. I may want to push this in and give them a couple little nostrils. So Alt key, I'm going to push it on down. Maybe we'll do something like this. Remember, the flesh is coming. It's kind of kind of keep that shape in and in and around. Maybe kind of bring it on up to here. Um, the pits of the eyes. Maybe I'll push in a little bit. Kind of give them some pits in there. I'm just goofing around. I'm not really sure how this is going to look in the end. Just goofing around. All right. So again, I like to have a reference. I'll get to that. We'll get to that later on. Gonna bring this across. Maybe I'll make the brush a little bigger. Give myself more of a forehead here. You see all that texture I've got going here? It's just like clay. That's going to help you in, in, in devising other techniques. So if I come back over to, let's go back up to here and see what's going on here. A lot of this is, 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 is Damien Standard and clay buildup with smoothing turned on. All right. See the pits of the eyes right over here. See how the flesh moves around the around the. You know, understanding your anatomy is really going to help you. Just basic human anatomy. You no, know, just look look at the muscular, you know, the the naked form um, without the skin on it, the muscle. Um, look at how the nose is being is being designed. Is after a combination of, of animal nostrils as well as uh, humanoid nostrils. Um, look at how the throat, the the muscles of the throat. All that's being is being you know defined in here as you as you as you want to get in the gaming field, you're gonna be required to know all this. Know your anatomy, build your head, build your bodies. Um, this is the guy that the Damien that the Damien Standard brush is named after. This is one of the interns there. Look at what he did. Damien Standard. How was this done here? Snake hook. Yep, snake hook. Right, look at these here. So he understands anatomy very, very well. All right, there are other little brushes that'll 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 give you this this texture detail um, represented here in the skull. A lot of Damien standard. This is a lot of um, the move topological. Damien Stedden etching etching um, veins into this guy. A little bit of smoothing. This here is going to be your bloat brush. So how does that work? <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Bloat brush. Maybe something around the lips possibly. Maybe the nostrils. So if I hit the brush here. And I think it's called the bloat brush. I, it's B. Oh, let me go back. No, no, I guess it's not called a blow brush. What is that called? What was that? Blob. blob. Is it the blob? No, it's not the blob. I hit the B. It didn't work. So 
I, I, there it is, magnify. So if you click it, see that little bit there? So what it's going to do is it's going to take, we'll do the lips or something. Um, let's bring this on down smaller here. Okay. Zoom in closer. You can adjust your screen here. Look at right over here, your zoom here. That's your screen. You can zoom in and out, make your screen bigger or smaller. Um, actual pixels, uh, scroll, right? That's just your screen. If I go to the lips, see that? Might be a good way of kind of developing lips for this creature. Maybe a little bigger brush here. All right. Maybe I'll kind of like pull a little more there. Remember, the lips are supposed to connect. It's a little thinner down here, but it's supposed to connect right down in here. I'm going to now. I'm going to go back, go back to the Damien standard. That's that, that's like a slicing tool, right? So Damien standard is like a slicing tool. Then maybe what I'll do is I'll slice into here. Slice into there. See that? Just playing around where this can go. In there, slice into there. And maybe we'll start making some type of a slice. See these? See these? See these textures coming here? Maybe I can start using the Damien standard to slice on through. All right. I'm just making this up. Bring down to the bottom of the chin. Just etching into this. Etching on in, using some of the textures that are already there to help motivate my decision making process as to what how, how this skin should fold. This alien skin should fold. Okay. If I hit deeper into it, right? Then my shift key, smooth it out, smooth it out, smooth it out, smooth it out, smooth it out. See? Smooth it out. Shift gives you the smoothing tool. It's just, and again, I need more resolution. So control D, add more resolution to it. So if I etch into this, it's even more detailed. See that? You know, etch around the nose a little bit it's going to come down here a little more come down to the lips just cutting into it a little bit cutting into it a little bit bringing this down cut into the lips do something a little different for this alien so it goes to low res as I move and then it when you release the mouse it goes back to your high res Shift key, once again, smooths this out. So that is what he's doing here. See? He's using Damien Standard, etching in there, smoothing it out. Etching in, smoothing it out. A little bit of the bloat tool, maybe a little bit of the move topological, etch into it, smooth it out. He'll keep doing it all the way through the whole, all through the whole monster. There, what was that? Say that, say that again? I don't know what where it's from. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. You can see some of these same techniques. All right. You start to explore. Once you get used to using these techniques, you're going to look at other people's stuff and go, oh, I know how you did that. It won't be a mystery anymore.
Right? At first, you look at it's kind of like, whoa, that's incredible. But then you start using the brush. It's kind of like, oh, wait a minute. That's Damien Standard. Maybe you no know, pieces of this is just a bloat brush or maybe the move topological, pull some of the flesh out, push it in. Damien Standard, push and pull flesh, Damien Standard. It's like a pattern. It's, it's, it's the, but you're going to find out you're going to be using three or four brushes and that's it. And it's simple, just simple. Now, it's got a lot of different stuff in here you can use to really revolutionize what you what you can do as an artist, but all you really, know, really need to know is just a few brushes. All right? All right, so let's do this. Let me, let me introduce, introduce everybody to what's called Z-Spheres. So what Z-Spheres are is a fast way for you to create something, a basic shape. Now, the basis to great 3D modeling is that you start with basic, simple shapes. You don't start complicated from the very beginning. And that's what this is going to do. The way this Z-spheres work is that you can make... Now, I'm in, I'm in symmetry mode. How do I turn off symmetry? Right. So let's say, for example, we're going to create some type of a bipedal um, alien of some sort. Um, rotate it around. Where's my the sphere? There it is. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pull it apart. Hit the X key again. There we go. X key one more time. All right. That's on the other side. Now, the way these spheres work is you're adding spheres to your existing sphere. The Q key, well, the Q key allows you to, actually that's moving it, hit the Q key. That allows you to create more what's called Z spheres. If I rotate this around, I've just added two more spheres. If I want to move these spheres, I'm going to W key. That allows me to move them outwards. Okay. If I want to add more spheres to this, I simply add the, hit the Q key and add another sphere, W, move the sphere, E key resizes the sphere. All right, so we can make some basic shapes. Now, why are we doing this? Let's say, for example, hit my W key again, bringing the, these down as legs. I'm going to rotate it around a little bit, see what I've got here. I'm going to go grab this one, move it around. See, I can move them around, basic shapes. It's going to be kind of like an Android type type of a, of a concept. And I want, like, this is going to be the knee, right? I want to add more in here. So go to my Q key and add another sphere. W is move. Isn't W moving, Maya? Right? Pull it on down. Hit the, hit the, that's the A key. I want the F key to fit in view. Okay? So W, move these. Maybe it will be like a, some type of a... Weird creature shape. All right, I'm going to hit the X key to turn off symmetry. Put my mouse closer to the center. So what it does is, is it's attaching itself to the center of the ball, and then wherever your mouse sits on the surface of the ball, that's where it's going to draw the shape. Hit the Q key and draw out the shape. W for move. Okay. Maybe we'll make a torso, like hit R key for resize. R key for resize? Or is it E key for resize? There we go. It's almost like uh, Maya. It's almost like Maya. Right? So there's this torso. F key fits the view. I want to I want to elongate the torso a little bit. So maybe what I'll do is I'll kind of hit the W, push that up like so. Q key, add another little torso, make it larger, W, pull it on out like this. OK. 
चलें See, and I can go back and move these around any time I want. So here, push it like this, pull it on back. Just goofing around here once again. Okay. All right, so this side, let's see, this one here is probably a lot smaller. So if I grab this E key, oh, kind of, sort of. There we go. I get a little larger here. I thought I can have a hard time connecting that. That's all right. I'm just going to bring it around. Maybe we'll make a shoulder. So come up to here. E key. Make it a little bigger. Upper body. X key. I'm way off of it. I'm way out of here, but Q. <clears throat> All right. Turn off the X key. W. And I can move these independently. Okay, put this to the side here. Put it to the side here. Maybe that's going to be the shoulder of some sort. Q key. W. Pull it on out. You guys will get the point, right? Now, if I want to scope it, I have to put it into polygon mode. To put it into polygon mode is the A key on the keyboard. There it is. All right. So if I, I'm in transpose right now, but let's go over to like clay buildup or something like that, right? And we can start sculpting it out. No, sucks as a character, but you know, I'm just I wasn't trying to build anything. All right? So now I can sculpt on it. See, once you do it, if I discard changes and, and go back to the other one, then we lose all those editing. Yeah. So when you want to keep your editing, you just simply tell it yes, keep the editing, and then you're gone from Z, Z, Z spheres forever. Now you can save that Z sphere shape if you want as another as another tool, and then re-edit this one and then save it as something else. So question: If you're done using the Z spheres, right, and you switch over to poly mode, but you don't want to keep working in red, something more visible, how would you change up the, uh, the skin for lack of a better? Okay, right over here for your for your material. So if I go, so the question is, how do I change the color of the skin? That's going to be your materials right over here. So if I say, for example, I'm going to hit my A, it's done, click that material. You can choose any material you want. Matte cap, um, clay, as chalk. You've got matte cap gray. If you click that one, oh, let's, see, let's, let's get this here. Change it. Give me a second here. All right, so come right down here. You, got it. you can change your texture here or physically come up here and change the color. Change it to whatever you want. So then what's the texture block? That's a quick, that's a little uh, a preset. So if I click this one here, like Chrome, right? Presets. Matte cap. I was at Metcap uh, Gorilla Metal, right? And you can always go in there and change the color of that metal. It's all right here. So if it's hard to see, well, then maybe you want to go to kind of white. Maybe you don't want that one. Maybe you want to go to this one here, like a Metcap Gray, 
and then come over here and change the color a little bit like this. Maybe that will be easier for you to kind of track and see. If you want to change um, your background color, for instance, you can go to your, it's under the documents. Oh, yeah, documents. No, it's not under documents. I'm forgetting where it is, guys. Oh, there it is. It is under documents. Yes, documents back. Right, if we click it, click and hold, and, and keep holding, wherever I drag over, that's the color I can give it. Right, it just, it's just, it, it's, it's a color picker. It's taking the color from whatever I sit over. So if I want like a grayish blue, I'll get the blue here, get this, select the blue like this, and go to my document back, click and hold, and go get that lighter gray, maybe, maybe that little bit of a neutral bluish background like so. All right. All right, go play with uh, Z-Spheres. Now, for those of you who don't have ZBrush on your machines at home, Pixelogic makes a free version of it. It's called Sculptress. Is on their site. So if you if you go to Pixel Logic, go to your 3D software, go down to Sculptress, and it's really really good. Same workflow, dynamics. Doesn't have all the advanced features of ZBrush, but it's it's um, it gives you enough that you guys can do your homework assignment with. <laughs> right. What was that? Uh, we're having a conversation about like, well, like, hope, uh, 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 like, hope on, like, on ZBrush. Right. And you said, oh, there's a free version. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, you can, you can use this. So there's lots of online, um, um, there's lots of tutorials online for sculptures. Just go look it up. It's going to be very similar to ZBrush, but just look it up and kind of research it out and then use, use sculptures to, to build your objects. Now ZBrush gives you, I think it's a free 30-day version. I think it does. Build something out in sculptures, will ZBrush be able to read it? It should. It should. That's my question. That's why I was just asking. Yeah. But remember, you can, you can, now your object is, will ZBrush recognize a sculptures object? It should. Um, if you, you, remember, you can also save it out as an OBJ. It's like the, it's like the JPEG of the, of, of the, of the 3D world. Okay, OBJ is a good one if you want other programs to recognize it. But um, you might be able to export it out as a. See, I don't play with uh, with sculptures that much. I, I I work primarily in ZBrush. So um, go on and, and and play around working in here. I'll download it real quick, just real fast. And um, I'm kind of required to teach ZBrush, but uh, sculptures I think will be kind of important for some of those who don't have ZBrush, a full license of ZBrush. Yeah, so because you can, you can use this. It's it's about eight hundred dollars a year or a month. Uh, well, no, you you pay once, you don't ever pay again. Oh, okay, so, so all the upgrades are free. Like I bought mine at version three, two and a half or three, and I paid a, a couple a couple hundred dollars for it because they had a special going on, and it's been free ever since then. Right. No, well, we, no. Let's take a look. Let's find that out. Yeah, um, ZBrush. Well, hold on. We're gonna go check. Let's go to ZBrush. 3D. There is a student version. They do have. They do have student licensing. All right. So we go to ZBrush. Let's see how much it is. Just look. 
All right, let's see what it is. Uh, get ZBrush. All right, no pricing. Let's see, get ZBrush again. Do it again. Just give me the darn pricing. <coughs> There we go. Okay, it's subscription pricing now. Single user monthly is thirty nine bucks a month. And if you want, if you want perpetual license, it's eight ninety five. It was it, ne it was never three thousand dollars ever. That's Maya. ZBrush. I've ne I've never known ZBrush to be three thousand. It was always within. It started at several hundred. It got up to six or seven hundred for a while, and then it just got up to eight ninety five. Okay. I've never known it to be three thousand bucks. I think I know Maya was expensive that way. Maya, Maya, Maya is about a couple grand. But because you're students, you get it free for three years. All right, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, that's eight ninety five. So once you pay this eight ninety five, you don't ever pay again. It's a lifetime. Oh, it's right there too. <laughs> it's well, right. It's a lifetime. But it remember this is the way software used to be. When first when software first came out, once you bought it, you never paid for it again. That's changed. So if you if you can't afford this, then pay the thirty nine bucks a month. It's you know, you got a six month subscription for one seventy nine. That's again, that's just subscription price. Um, but if you can afford, you know, save up your pennies and get the um, lifetime one, then you're like done. Every time they put an update out, you get it for free. It's part of your account. Magic. 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 It's an incredible software. Okay, now check this out. I'll show you. I'll, I'll just segue from that. Now this is we're gonna cover this a little bit more later on. Didn't really want to cover it uh, in this class, but um, let's go to my materials mat cap and then go ahead and change this. Okay, now check this out. Um, we can mask it off, kind of like masking in Photoshop, right? And masking is the control key on your keyboard. Wow. And the way masking works is, say, for example, you only want to affect this part of the body and that's it, right? So whatever is whatever is black is going to be blocked out. So if I start to put the clay buildup, see? Now, what if I want the opposite affected? It is hold the control key down and tap out here. It inverses it. So now... You can come in and do start building up the leg. All right. So if I want to get rid of it, hold the control key down, activates the mask, and click and drag like that, and it deletes the mask. So for example, if you want to put on you no know, you no know, glutes on this guy. Then what you can do is control, get the mask. Think about how the glutus, the glutus maximus muscles are going to be, how it's going to be, you know, positioned, or the basic shape of it right in here. Okay. Then control, tap and release, inverse it. I can make a, a larger. Bring it around, kind of like alien glutes, and then I'll do the other side. Yeah, remember we can also do the shift key, right? Smooth it out. All right, so to speak. Just you need to get the point. All right. Um. We want to bring in abs or something. Control. I should bring this brush down a little bit. So smaller. Okay. So shift key. Say something like 
create alien abs <gasps> or scaling of some sort and it's going to come around to the side of its body make this a little smaller Right, control, click and release, bigger brush. All right, start to create this little scaling for the abdomen area. Of course, it's, it's not to be a character, it's just making a point. Uh, shift key smooth out if I if I want to do so. All right, mm -hmm. control click and release, or control drag it, and then you can come in here and continue to work. Add more more texture in here. Using your mask, it's gonna isolate. You want to do the do the neck of some sort. You just want the neck in here, okay? Clay build up. Clay build up. This is so you can you can isolate these areas. <laughs> so just play with your brushes play with that a little bit kind of get used to we're not creating anything just just play okay so I just installed Sculptress um, works just like ZBrush right click control zooms in and out I'm moving my brush up and down and alt with a, a right click and move right to left that's your pan okay um, click anywhere that's your rotate or at your pin hover above your welcome stylus welcome pad and click and drag a right click gives you uh, a rotate so it's a standard draw brush at first Okay, uh, making it bigger and smaller is the bracket, bracket, bracket key to the right, bracket key to the left. You know, you can adjust the size of your brush to you know, the create the effects you want. Alt digs in, I believe. There it is. Alt digs in while um, no modifier for this brush brings, you know, pushes your, your geometry outward. You've got different types of brushes here. Your, let's see, let me bring this up, pull these up a little more. And put another little, bring that up a little bit more. That might be a little easier. Now i got a crease brush here, brush here. So if I target that one, and let me uh, bring the size down just a little bit and get in a little closer. Let's see what this does. There we go. It's kind of creasing those edges a little bit. We've got, uh, that's a rotate brush, scale brush, um, flatten brush. That's nice. See that there? Kind of flatten out that surface. You've got um, that's a grab brush. If I go to grab, I'm assuming that that works kind of like almost like your snake hook, but I kind of like this better. 
All right, so I'm going to pull some shapes. Remember those hairs on that one? On, on Damien's? What was that? Yeah, the vulture one. Okay, if I go to make the brush smaller, see? Get a little bigger, stronger. Like making little scales or spikes on the dragon. How you rotate your object makes a huge difference as to how your tool is going to react. Okay. Now what do we got here? We got inflate. So if I grab, how about if I grab one of these here and that's going to bloat it out? Inflate. See that? So it's pretty much your major tools that you would use in ZBrush. They're here. Um, pinch, right? If I pinch it in, see that's right, kind of swells it down a little bit. Okay. And what else we have? We've got a smoothing brush. Matter of fact, there's the smoothing happening there. If I'm going to go back to my standard brush, let's see if I use my shift key for smoothing. Shift, it's not happening here. Oh, wait a minute, maybe it is. Yes, it is. It's just not changing, it's just the brush is not changing color. So this is exactly like ZBrush. Free. You don't have to pay $8.95. That's right. Symmetry turned on. So this is typically a one-way operation. Okay, there we go. So if I just pull this out, let's see if uh, you no know, symmetry is turned on. So if I start to paint, I think it's turned on. There's symmetry. Symmetry is there. Click it. It's one-way action. We know. All right. So if I start to paint, there we go. In fact, I'm in the wrong tool for this. I think what I'll do is I'll go to the pinch. I don't know. Maybe just let's use the draw tool. Okay, let's bring this back. There we go. See, they're both being affected. Alt key pushes in. All right, pull this on out here. Who knows? This could be like a weird fish creature or something. See the little line down the middle, which is actually trying to determine your, which is giving you a, 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 a mirror reference. Alt. Bring it on in. All right. <laughs> Okay, um, these, are the, these are basically some of your main tools here. It kind of covers most of what you might want to use. Your materials, right? Right, and that looks just like in ZBrush. Click it. It's actually a lot more friendlier than ZBrush, to be actually, to be quite honest. Right, it's a lot simpler. This your brush. And we can uh, save your set, add, cancel. I'm going to cancel for now. I won't get too much of that right now. But you can strengthen your brushes controlled here. Size of your brushes controlled here. Okay. Okay. So really simple. It's not going, I don't think this is going to have Z spheres. That's a, but I believe you can also download um, ZBrush 30 Days Free. 
I believe it can. So just check and see. I could be wrong about that. Right. What company is it? Pixel Logic is the name of the company. Question is, what company is?